video is on empirical and molecular formulas. So empirical molecular formulas are kind of like a recipe uh, to make something. So we're going to use the example of making rice. So to make rice, we need a cup of rice and two cups of water. So we could call the formula for making rice R1W2 for my one cup of rice and my two cups of water. If I want to double my recipe for rice, let's say I want to make it for more than just me, for me and a friend, I would double my batch of rice, and to do that, I would instead of one cup of rice, need two cups of rice, and instead of two cups of water, I'd need four cups of water. So my new formula would be R2W4 for my two cups of rice, two cups of water. This leads into empirical molecular formulas. My empirical formula is my whole number ratio of atoms of elements in a compound. This cannot be reducing, or I cannot reduce my subscripts on this. So this is like my normal rice recipe of one cup of rice, two cups of water, R1W2. A molecular formula is going to be the simplest, or the simple whole number multiple of an empirical formula, where my subscripts can be reduced. So I double my batch of rice to give me two cups of rice, four cups of water, so I have a formula of R2W4. This would be considered my molecular formula for my rice, whereas my R1W2 can be considered my empirical formula for my rice. So something we need to be able to do is to determine if a formula given to us is in its empirical state or molecular state. So let's go through a couple examples. Here I have C2H4. Now my subscripts 2 and 4 can each be reduced by 2, causing this to be a molecular formula and my empirical formula would have been CH2. Carbon monoxide, CO, that has two subscripts of one that we don't write. So here it would be an empirical formula. My next example, C11H12O22, starts off looking like it could be molecular, but in fact it's empirical. Because 11, 12, and 22 do not have any common denominators. So therefore, this stays as it is, and is again empirical. Same thing here with my C2H4O1. Now anytime there's one element with an imaginary one for a subscript, that's going to be empirical because it cannot be reduced any more than it is. So again here is empirical. And then finally I have hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Here both my subscripts are 2, meaning they can both be reduced by 2. Therefore, this is molecular, and it's going to be H-O. Now, a little test to make sure that you're listening to the videos here. I have a shout-out to my sisters, Casey and Corinne, who watch these regularly. But instead, if you're listening, I'd like you to draw a nice star at the top of your page, showing that you both listened to this video and watched it completely. to ways that we can actually determine our empirical formulas. There's a couple steps we need to follow. First, we need to take the percents and pretend it's out of 100 grams, if we're told percents of each compound in our formula. Then we're going to convert our grams of our each one of our elements to moles via the molar mass. Next, step three, we need whole number ratios, so we'll divide each number by the smallest number. Four, if then we're still not having whole numbers, we're going to multiply both numbers by the lowest number possible to make whole numbers, and this will make more sense in a minute. And then five, we can check our work by finding the percent composition of each. So let's step, walk through our example number one, where we find our empirical formula of a compound that is 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen. Now this is like the information you're calculating in your percent composition problems where you would have determined what is the percent composition of nitrogen and hydrogen in this compound. Well, now this is given to you, and this is where step one, you take your percents and pretend it's out of 100. So 25.9% of 100 is 25.9. We say grams because we're taking it out of 100 grams, so we have 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 grams of oxygen. Now we're looking to figure out our formula and where our subscripts are going to be, we want to find numbers. So I have N, X, O, Y, and X and Y are those subscripts I'm trying to find. Step two, I'm going to convert my grams to mole via my molar mass. 
my grams of nitrogen, 25.9 grams of nitrogen, divided by the molar mass of nitrogen of 14.1 grams per one mole, gives me 1.85 moles of nitrogen. Same thing for oxygen, 74.1 grams of oxygen, divided by its molar mass of 16.00 grams oxygen per one mole, gives me 4.63 moles of oxygen. Now I wouldn't be writing my equation N1.5 O4.63 because I need these both to be whole numbers. So that's where my next step, 3, comes in, where I need to divide each by the smallest number. My smallest number in here is 1.85. So I divide my nitrogens, 1.85 by 1.85, which is 1 nitrogen, and my oxygens of 4.63 divided by 1.85 gives me 2.5 oxygens. Now I have N1 O2.5. Again, I still haven't achieved my whole numbers for both of them. So this is where I get to step four. I want to multiply both by the lowest number to make them whole numbers. Well, 2.5 multiplied by 2 makes it 5. So that's the lowest number I can multiply both these by to get whole numbers. So 1 nitrogen times 2 gives me 2 nitrogens, and 2.5 oxygen times 2 gives me 5 oxygens. So my empirical formula is N2O5. I can check this by saying, well, what's my percent nitrogen? Well, 28 is my mass of nitrogen in a 108.2 grams gives me 25.9% nitrogen. Same thing for oxygen, my 80 grams of oxygen, which is 16 times 5, divided by 108.02 gives me 74.1% oxygen. Now let's walk through our example empirical formula problem. For my example problem, example number two, I want to calculate my empirical formula for a compound with 5.34 grams carbon, 0.42 grams hydrogen, and 47.08 grams of chlorine. Well, I don't have percent, so I can skip that step, and I'm on step two where I need to convert grams to moles. 5.34 grams of carbon, divided by its molar mass of 12.01 grams per one mole gives me 0 0.44 moles of carbon. My hydrogen of 0 0.42 grams divided by its molar mass of 1.01 grams per one mole gives me 0 0.42 moles of hydrogen. And then for my chlorine, my 47.08 grams of chlorine divided by its molar mass of 35.45 grams per one mole gives me moles of 1.33 moles of chlorine. Now none of these are whole numbers, so I need to divide by the lowest number given to me. So I'm going to divide all by 0 0.42. And here I essentially get 1. It's very close. This is carbon. Here I get 1. And 1.33 divided by 0 0.42 gives me 3. 1, 6, 7. So, then what I'm going to do is I now, because they're still not whole numbers, I need to multiply by my lead, by the number that's going to make a whole number for me. So for these, because I have 0.167, I'm going to multiply everything times 6. Because that's going to turn 3.167 into 19. 1 times 6 is 6 and again times 6. So now I have C6, H6, Cl19, and that gives me a final empirical formula of C6, H6, Cl19. know how to calculate my formulas for molecular formulas. There's a set of steps to do this as well. 
First, I'm going to calculate my empirical formula mass. This is known as the, ma the molar mass of my empirical formula given to me, abbreviated EFM. Next, I'm going to divide my given molar mass of my molecular formula by my EFM to determine my multiplier. Because I know that my, my molecular formula is some multiplier bigger than my empirical formula. My empirical formula has been a reduction in my molecular formula. So therefore, the molar mass are going to be um, that much bigger, that much smaller, same as the multiplier I used to go from one to the other. Next, I'm going to multiply my empirical formula by that multiplier I found in step two to get my molecular formula. So example three says to find the molecular formula of a compound whose molar mass is 60 grams per mole and an empirical formula of CH4N. Step number one, I want to calculate my EFM, my empirical formula mass. I have carbon, hydrogens, and nitrogens. I have one carbon, four hydrogens, and one nitrogen. And my molar masses I found off my periodic table. When I calculate this, I get an empirical formula mass of 30.06, which I'm going to round to 30 as my um, molar mass was rounded. So my molar mass, then I'm going to divide by my empirical formula S to determine my multiplier. My molar mass of 60 grams per mole divided by my empirical formula mass of 30 grams per mole gives me 2. So this is my multiplier that I'm then going to do in step 3, multiply my multiplier times my empirical formula. So that's going to distribute into all three of these elements to give me C2, because 2 times 1, 2 times my CH4 gives me um, H8, and 2 times my N gives me N2. So my molecular formula is C2H8N2. Let's walk through one more example problem together. I want to find my molecular formula of a compound whose molar mass is 204 grams per mole and my empirical formula is C5H10O2. So first I need to figure out my empirical formula mass. I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbon is 12.01 times the 5 that I have. Hydrogen is 1.01 times the 10 that I have. And oxygen is 16.00 times the 2 that I have. 12.01 times 5 is 60. 0 0.05, 1.01 times 10 is 10.1, and 16 times 2 is 32. When I add these together, I get an empirical formula mass of 102 grams per mole. Step 2, I'm going to take my molar mass, and I'm going to divide by my empirical formula mass, to figure out what my multiplier is. My molar mass given to me is 204 grams per mole. And I'm going to divide that by my empirical formula mass that I've just calculated. This comes out to be 2. Therefore, in step 3, I'm going to multiply my empirical formula, C2 or C5, H10, O2 times my multiplier of 2 to give me C10 H20 O4. And that is my molecular formula, which can be reduced by 2 to go back to my empirical formula. Go ahead now and try your two practice problems to determine both empirical and molecular formula. For the second one of finding your molecular formula, you'll first have to calculate empirical formula and then molecular formula. Your answers are listed here.